And here we go, quarter number three underway. The kick taken by Wayne Williams. Whoa! He's got running room up the middle, and he gets it all the way out to the 39-yard line. What a gigantic hole was there by that uh, kickoff return team. William Arnold making the tackle. A 30-yard return by Wayne Williams. Well, the good news for an offense that's uh, had some problems is they get a chance to redeem themselves early in the second half. The Gators have the football, and let's see if they can move it with any consistency. And as we were talking about having problems uh, putting points on the board against LSU last week and certainly this afternoon, Memphis State giving the Gator offense all kinds of trouble. The pass intended for Emmett Smith. Nico Perkins, number 41, was right on top of him. There's what Kyle Morris did in the first half. And Jim, how concerned should Galen Hall be about the offense? The offense did not score a point last week, some field goals, but the touchdown was a, a defensive touchdown. The last touchdown the offense have scored was that 96-yard run by Emmett Smith two weeks ago. Well, I'm sure on a scale of one to ten, he's he's probably a nine or nine and a half in terms of ten being very concerned. Second down and ten. This is Emmett Smith, who rushed for 46 yards in the first half. He reaches about the 50-yard mark with about a four-yard gain. You know, there were points uh, last weekend against LSU where the Gator offense just looked uh, terrific. They weren't able to get into the end zone, but they were able to chew the clock up on a couple of different occasions, move the ball uh, with consistency. But this afternoon, uh, they're really having their problems. It is third down now, and about six yards to go for the first down. In the opening minute of quarter number three. Morris dropping straight back. Can't find an open man. He's going to try to run for the first down. He's got it. Out of bounds at the Memphis State 45-yard line. First down, Gators. Steve Smith finally chased him out. Again, good coverage in the second door secondary forces Kyle Morris to run with the football watch Mark McGriff peel back right here and hit Scott Rumley boom a gigantic hit right there by the big strong tight end Mark McGriff it is the sixth first down of the afternoon for the Gators first down at the Memphis State 45 Emmett Smith looking for running room on the far side has a little bit gets inside the 40 down to about the 38 yard line Steve Smith finally making the stop on Emmett Smith and this crowd getting into it a little bit now as the offense is moving the ball better than they did at any time in the first half there you see the numbers on that first half look at the total yards dead even 111 apiece the penalties three each 111 for the Gators but but about half what they're used to generating in one half of a ball game. Second down, about two yards to go for the first down. Again, it's Emmett Smith. Torrey Epps, number 66, making the tackle. It'll be shy of a first down, a yard and a half. It'll be third down and one. This defensive unit of Memphis State has really done its job this afternoon. Charlie Bailey has to be very proud of their performance. A big play here for both sides. Third and one. Emmett Smith has the first down. All the way down to the 30-yard line. Eddie Moore making the stop for Memphis State, but it's another Gator first down. And the big fullback, Cedric Smith, doing a tremendous job on the lead block. It's a lead by the fullback into the hole. And watch Cedric Smith, number 39, just power his way through the hole, creating the opportunity for Emmett Smith. 18 carries now for 65 yards for Emmett Smith. First down at the 30-yard line. Emmett again to the right side. Turns off about eight yards. We do have a penalty marker down back in the secondary. It is a holding against the Gators. Sweep, Emmett Smith has a convoy of about three Gators. Big Richard Starweski. Now we're not able to.
able to pick up exactly who it is, but uh, obviously there was a holding call, and the Gators have backed themselves up now near the Memphis State 40-yard line. That is the fourth penalty, 45 yards worth, marched off against the Gators this afternoon. It's now first and 20. The pitch toward Wayne Williams goes out of bounds back at the 46-yard line, and this drive all of a sudden going the other way. Cal Morris has had problems with that option all year long, and uh, they don't run it that often, and when they do, it's uh, rarely effective. Right there, the ball bounced on the ground. Emmett Smith had no chance to catch it. So now it'll be second down, and about 26 yards to go for the first down. And this drive, which started so well, now has stalled. Morris back to throw on second and long. And a great defensive move there by Marlon Brown, number 53, who batted away the Kyle Morris pass to make it third and 26. Well, that drive started out with great promise, but it turned into a disaster rather quickly. The Gators came out, moved the ball with the running game, but then a penalty, a poor pitch on the option, an incompleted pass, and really having problems here on the last couple plays. Morris now 4 out of 14 for 35 yards. Third and 26. Going long downfield for Ernie Mills. Caught. I don't know how, but Ernie Mills somehow got himself in between Mike Nettles and Glenn Rogers and caught that ball. First down. behind Mike Nettles. Mike Nettles, who overruns the ball a bit, has his hands on it. The ball is juggled, but then Mills catches it after the juggle. Meanwhile, back at the 45-yard line or so, Kyle Morris still down for the Gators. We didn't see the hit, but obviously after he released the football, he must have taken a big hit quarterbacks are very vulnerable when they're passing the football. Kyle Morris is still down. After the biggest completion of the afternoon, the fifth completion in 15 attempts for Kyle Morris, and a great catch on the opposite end by Ernie Mills. Let's take a look now. Here comes Tony Epps, number 66. Oh, and he's going to hit Kyle Morris when he's most vulnerable. Hits him right in the head, stuns him a bit. He is going to come out for a play at least, and Herbert Perry comes into the ballgame. A big sigh of relief went around Florida Fields. Crowd of over 73,000 on hand here today as Kyle Morris ran off under his own power. Herbert Perry takes over now. First and goal at the six-yard line. When you go down with a timeout, you have to come out at least one play. Perry pitching to Emmett Smith. Smith inside the five, diving to about the three-yard line. He was tripped up by Clarence Haber. Scott Rumley also in on the stop, but it's second and goal. The Gators send in Willie McGrady and Cedric Smith. They're sending in their big, powerful fullbacks. Two big fullbacks flanking Emmett Smith, the All-American tailback. Second and goal from the three. Herbert Perry pitching to Emmett Smith. Smith runs into a wall of white. He gains maybe one yard. Damon Young, number 18. James Cribbs, number 99. And a couple of others in there for Memphis State. It'll be third down. Now that Gator offense needs to take advantage of this opportunity. Memphis State uh, with a 6-3 to three lead right here. The Gator offense can turn the momentum around if they can get in that end zone. Big play on third down. 20 carries for 70 yards now for Evan Smith. Third and goal from the two. The handoff is to one of the fullbacks and touchdown. They're going to fake the handoff here to 
Emmett Smith, who's being led by Willie McGrady, and give the ball instead to Cedric Smith. And big David Williams, number 73, makes a gigantic block. And going for two, the Gators have made it. Willie McGrady. The Gators have taken an 11-6 lead with 9.59 remaining in quarter number three. We'll be right back. Touchdown by the Gators has really brought this crowd back into the game. Cedric Smith carrying in from a couple of yards out. Willie McGrady for the two-point conversion. First touchdown, the Gators' offensive scores, Jim, since two games ago, and Emmett Smith took it 96 yards in a record-breaking run. Yeah, that offensive unit, the offensive coaching staff, has got to be breathing a sigh of relief right now because the offensive unit did, in fact, punch the ball in and get some points on the board. Francis with the kick. It comes to Charles Wilson inside the 10-yard line. And Wilson tripped up big time by Jerry Odom. Another look at the touchdown scored by Cedric Smith, Jim. Emmett Smith at the tailback is going to be led by Willie McGrady, but they give the ball instead to Cedric Smith, and the defense was keying on Emmett Smith. Meanwhile, Cedric, behind the block of David Williams, gets the touchdown. As, as we look at uh, Jerry Odom and the defense right there. Now Memphis State goes to work offensively. Jones running the ball. Gets only about a yard defense now that the lead is back in Florida's lap swarming all over Tim Jones Trace Armstrong and Tim Polk 61 yards 12 plays Cedric Smith taking it in five minutes of possession and a big big play when Kyle Morris hit Ernie Mills for that first down and third and 26 second down and eight at the 25. Handoff goes to Bill Moody in there now at fullback. Trace Armstrong bringing him down at the 29-yard line. It'll be third and five. Gator defense been playing tough all day long, doing a nice job stifling the Memphis State offensive attack. Gator defense been playing tough all year long. Amen. Number one in the nation. Third and five. Jones rolls left. Firing long downfield. It is caught at the 25-yard line. Charles Wilson on the receiving end. The junior from Tallahassee. A 46-yard gain. And a first down for Memphis State. Charles Wilson's 5'9". Lewis Oliver is almost 6'3". Tim Jones just heaves the ball down the field. Lewis Oliver just cannot get there in time. A perfectly thrown pass. Wilson coming up with a gigantic catch for Memphis State. So Tim Jones matching Kyle Morris with a big, long pass for a first down. Gerald White runs into one wall, and down he comes, losing about three yards on the play. It'll be second down and 13. And the wall he ran into was Trace Armstrong and Tim Paul. They bounced the uh, ball carrier into the backfield, and then Jeff, Jeff Ross, Ross brought came him down. around and made the tackle. A loss of two at second and 12. Jones rolls right. Fires downfield, he had a receiver wide open. Ray Kraft, number 11, for another Memphis State first down. Down to the Gator 11-yard line. Memphis State having success with the sprint out action puts a lot of pressure on the linebackers and the secondary, of course, and Kraft just coming up with a nice catch, breaking the tackle of Tim Lang, uh, Bill Lang, moving the ball down almost to the 10-yard line. Lewis Oliver. Tackle, first down, Memphis State. The pitch is to number 32, Xavier Crawford, and he is in for the touchdown. The freshman from Memphis, a true freshman. And 
Memphis State has regained the lead. Tim Jones, the quarterback, just doing a tremendous job of extra effort, almost going down to the ground, but giving the ball up at the last second to Xavier Crawford. Let's watch Jones here on the option. Option to the right, fakes the ball to the fullback, almost goes down, but pitches the ball back to Crawford, who makes a nice dipsy do on Kerry Watkins right there and gets into the end zone. Just a beautiful drive all the way by Memphis State. Here we see the quarterback almost going down, but comes up with a pitch anyway to Crawford. Memphis State with a big six, and it looks like they might be going for two after the touchdown. Well, they have regained the lead, 12-11 here. If they go for the two and make it, it means that a field goal would only tie it. There are seven minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the third quarter. They are lining that ball up on the left hash mark. Might give them more of an opportunity to run that sprint out action that they've had success with to the right, spread that defense out, and either run or throw. They're going for two. Jones rolls right, looks into the end zone. He's got it. Charles Wilson on the receiving end. And Memphis State, after surrendering the lead to the Gators, come right back with a big drive of their own. With 7-16 remaining, they now lead it 14-11 in the third quarter. We'll be right back. Another look at that two-point conversion, which gives Memphis State a three-point lead. We mentioned that they've had success with the sprint out, and they stretch that Gator defense out. Pat Moore just can't get to Wilson before he comes up with a catch. A lot of pressure on the linebackers when they run that sprint out action. That is the first touchdown scored against the Gator defense since way back in the second game of the season. That was the Mississippi game. Butler squibbing that kick again. Picked up at the 20-yard line. Out to about the 35-yard line. David Schlarbaum making the tackle after a 15-yard return. So now the offense has it right back in their left. A drive for a touchdown on their last possession, matched by this 77-yard drive, which took only six plays. And the big play on the Memphis State side, again, was a long pass play going from the quarterback, Tim Jones, to one of his wide receivers, Charles Wilson. First down. That's a Gator 36. Kyle Morris is back in there. So is Emmett Smith. And a good game that time by Emmett Smith. He's out of bounds right at first down territory at about the 46-yard line. Emmett Smith just tripping up on his own offensive tackle. Big John Durden, who was out there throwing a block, but uh, very nice running play right there. Gators pick up a first down. Give the ball to Emmett Smith, the tailback. 21 carries for 80 yards now for Emmett Smith. Galen Hall thought Smith might have been hit a little late after he got out of bounds. It is a first down at the 46. 7.02 to go, third quarter. First down play, Rick Friedet making the hit on Emmett Smith after a gain of about two. Down to the sideline now, Larry Patel. Larry? Well, Pete, as you would expect, the crowd really hasn't been here most of the day today. The Gator effort in the first half was far short of what they've seen all year, and yet the crowd got right back into it, and Florida took control of this game with the long drive, but the defense, which had been strong all day, let down on that drive, and once again, we've got a very quiet gathering of 74,000 people as the Gators try to get it going offensively. Second down and eight. The handoff fake to Emmett Smith, Kyle Morris, coming over near the near sideline, going to have to take it out of bounds. At the 49-yard line, a gain of about a yard, could not find an open receiver, and you've got to say this for the Memphis State defense and secondary, Jim, they have been all over Florida receivers all afternoon. And give credit where credit's due, Charlie Bailey, the head coach, is a defensive genius, and he certainly has come up with a game, uh, great game plan for Memphis State this afternoon. They're just 
playing the Gators uh, very tough in the secondary, and they're doing a nice job shutting down Emmett Smith as well. And keep in mind, this is a restructured defensive secondary. Reggie DeBose, normally the top man in this defensive backfield, injured his knee in practice this week. And they had to restructure the entire defensive backfield. What a job they've done. Morris back to throw, and it's picked off by Moore. Eddie Moore has given Memphis State the ball back at their own 48-yard line with 6.06 to go in the third quarter, and Memphis State leading it by three. A lot of confidence right now over on that uh, sideline of Memphis State right now. Offense and defense playing very well. They feel like they're going to win this ball game. A lot of confidence on defense. Moore coming up with a big interception. We mentioned he has four or five interceptions coming into this ball game. That's the first down for Memphis State. Jones rolls right. Well, he took a chance on that one. He really didn't have anybody to throw it to, and there were all kinds of orange jerseys downfield. Tim Polk was the man right in on Tim Jones. He just threw, uh, threw it up for grabs there, Jim. Well, and I think he was trying to throw it out of bounds as well. It, uh, he wasn't going to give up the easy interception, but you know the difference there was Tim Polk got outside on containment, put pressure on that quarterback before a couple of times previously, Memphis State had success getting the quarterback outside, but Polk was right there to make the hit. Eddie Moore with his fifth interception of the year. Giving Memphis State a chance to add to their lead. The handoff goes to number 32, Xavier Crawford, and the freshman out of Memphis gets it across midfield into Gator territory down to the 48-yard line. Tim Polk and Ephesians Bartley making the tackle. Charlie Bailey on the Memphis State sideline trying to guide his team to what would be the biggest win in his career at Memphis State. Crawford now with seven carries for 38 yards, making himself a presence in this game in his freshman year. Third down and six. It's Crawford again. This time he goes nowhere. Jeff, Jeff Ross. Ross right there. You know, Crawford only had 38 net yards coming into this ballgame, and he's got 38 this afternoon against the Gators. The defense is held. Jeff Fight has checked in to do the putting. His sixth punt, you saw that the average of 46 yards really enhanced by a 69 yarder in the first half. It took a big Memphis State bounce. Lomack back deep. The Gators were going after the kicker, and look at that punt. All the way into the end zone. This one went 53 yards. Correction, 48 yards. 442, the time left in quarter number three. Memphis State with a three-point lead. We'll be right back. Two to go, third quarter. Gators trailing by three. They have the ball on their own 20-yard line, first down. The pitch is to Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith carries out to about the 24-yard line. A gain of about four. It'll be second down and six. Nettles making the stop along with Damon Young. 22 carries, 84 yards for Emmett Smith. As he closes in on yet another 100-yard afternoon. Did you say 22 carries? That's a lot of carries. I think Charlie Bailey uh, came into this game wanting to shut down Emmett Smith and make Florida pass the ball to beat him. Florida's going to have to pass the ball with some success to beat them because that defense, their task is to shut down Emmett Smith. This carry out to about the 28-yard line. It'll be third down and two. Nico Perkins, number 41, making the initial hit for the Tigers. So a big third down play coming up here. Emmett Smith goes off the field. Wayne Williams comes on the field for the Gators. 14-11 Memphis State in a surprising development here at Florida Field. Gators were favored by anywhere from 21 to 23 points in this game, and it has not been easy at all. Wayne Williams running for the first down, getting out across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. Nico Perkins again making the initial hit. Glenn Rogers finished off the tackle. Damon Young also in on it. 
So it'll be a first down. A reminder that Sports Channel Florida brings you all the excitement of NHL hockey all this week. On Sunday night, the New York Islanders face the LA Kings with Wayne Gretzky. That's a 10.30 starting time. Tuesday, Washington takes on Pittsburgh. Wednesday, Quebec against Montreal. You can catch all the action right here on Sports Channel Florida. Standard equipment for the Florida sports fan. Morris back to throw on first down. Caught by Lomack over near the 39-yard line. He lost his footing. It'll go for about an eight-yard gain. Randall Cooper back there in the coverage for Memphis State. Tony Lomack trying to put the move on the defensive back and just lost his footing right there and. Uh, but he does have that super quickness. He does have the ability to get open in the open field. Can be very dangerous when he gets on uh, the ball in the open field. Second down and two. Lomack and Mills both come out wide left. The handoff is to Emmett Smith. Can't find a hole. Now looks for one of his own. And he'll be shy of the first down by about a yard. Scott Rumley, Glenn Rogers. And on that hit, along with Nico Perkins, number 41. It'll be third down and about a yard to go for the first down. Two oh five left, third quarter. Memphis State, 14, Florida, 11, our score. Emmett Smith. James Cribbs thinks that Memphis State held him, and he may be right. Emmett Smith is down, and he's holding on to his left knee, and this could be very bad. Let's see if we can pick it up at the line of scrimmage. Emmett has a problem with his knee right there. It looks like the uh, the force of the hit by James Cribbs, who's 6'4", 265, might have made that knee cave in. A lot of traffic at the line of scrimmage, and big Cribbs crashing down on Emmett Smith right there. And, and a lot of breaths being held here at Florida Field right now, as Emmett Smith has tended to. We've talked, Jim, all day, all day long about the offense and how the offense has kind of sputtered at times this year. I'll tell you what, if Emmett Smith goes down, the offense will really have its work cut out well, for it the rest of the way. Well, if you had the potential loss of an Emmett Smith to the loss of a Stacey Simmons, that changes the complexion of your offense in a hurry. But hopefully, Emmett can shake this off and get back in action. Remains to be seen. Seems to be putting some weight on his leg. Looks doubtful that he'll be back in this afternoon, but uh, we'll just hope that he can, in fact, come back later on. We'll have Larry Vitell down on the field check into this and give us a report as soon as he can get one on Emmett Smith. In the meantime, the Gators are shy of the first down. They are forced to punt here. A one-hop snap handled by Acosta Rua, who line drives the kick. Takes a good Florida bounce. That'll pick it up anyway. And he's going to go down inside the 10-yard line. He's sorry he did that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven orange shirts around him. Chris probably made the first hit and was soon joined by a half dozen others. That ball might have bounced into the end zone. It seemed to have quite a bit of speed right there when Nettles picked it up. The Gator coverage was all over him, though. And now Memphis State in terrible field position. If that Gator defense can rise to the occasion, they might give their offense the ball with some good field position, but the first thing they got to do is stop Memphis State. A minute 16 to go, third quarter. Memphis State leading by three. Jones has Pryor and White behind him as he lines up the Memphis State Tigers first down at the nine-yard line. Gerald White has a little running room outside, got out to the 12-yard line where Tim Polk brought him down. The broadcast rights of this game have been granted to Sports Channel Florida by the University of Florida, solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction or other use of this program without consent of Sports Channel Florida is prohibited. You know, Tim Polk, the inside linebacker right there, had the speed to run the tailback down from behind. 
Second down, about seven yards to go for the first down. The ball gets shy of the Memphis State 13-yard line. Pryor, the fullback, gets it out to about the 17. Shy of the first down by about two. Pat Moore okay. making the stop for the Gators. Memphis State right now has almost 109 yards rushing the football. The Gator defense was only giving up around 77, I believe, coming into this ball game. So Memphis State is having some success on the ground as we crank down the seconds of this third quarter. Only 15 seconds to go, third quarter. Handoff go to the tailback, Gerald White. He's out to the 23-yard line for a Memphis State first down. Mark Murray making the tackle. Big first down for Memphis State right there, backed up inside their 10-yard line. They come out with a nice offensive series and pick up the first down. And time has expired in quarter number three. Memphis State trying to pull the upset of the year at this point. Leading the Florida Gators 14 to 11 with one quarter of football left. And we'll leave this third quarter with some more Gator trivia. What former Gator All-American went on to be an all-pro defensive end with the Los Angeles Rams? The answer when we get back. There's your trivia question. What former Gator All-American went on to be an all-pro defensive end with the L.A. Rams? The answer, Jack Youngblood. What a player he was, collegiately Jack, and as a pro. Yeah, Jack Youngblood uh, deserves to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and I'm sure he'll make it. One quarter of football remaining. Memphis State surprising all the experts so far. They lead it 14 to 11. And at the change of the quarter, they ran down the field. So you, they're pumped up right now. They know they can win this football game. And they want to go out and prove it. Tim Jones barking out the signals on first down for the 23-yard line. They give us to Gerald White. White gets out to the 26-yard line. Runs into Pat Moore there. A gain of about three. It'll be second down and seven. There you see that Florida has outscored the opposition by 41 zip in the fourth quarter. They had not given up any points in the first quarter this year until today. That's the state got a field goal in the first quarter. That's the state now with 124 yards rushing on the day. Gerald White again. For about three or four more. Bill Lang making the tackle along with Mark Murray. Oh, just a very tough, hard-fought ball game at the line of scrimmage. Memphis State doing everything they have to do to win this football game. Very well, impressive performance by the Tigers here. Florida's best ranking in the polls coming into this week was the number 11 slot in the UPI poll. They're going to have to pull one out to maintain that today. Third and two. The crowd screaming for the defense to do it one more time. Jones running for the first down, backs out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Well, again, the Gators break down on containment on outside the outside the fake freezes the linebackers inside. Jones easily picks up the first down by just sprinting down the sideline. Tim Jones missed two games earlier in the season with a pinched nerve. Memphis State. Lost both those games when Jones had the shoulder problem. Galen Hall was dead right when he said, with Jones back in there, Memphis State's a very different football team, and they've showed it right, here this afternoon. Wayne Pryor, the ball carrier. Jeff Roth and Rondy Weston That's making the right, hit right. after a gain of another two or three yards. Well, now they're going to mark it back at the 37, so call it no gain. That's the state a yard better now than Florida on the ground and three points better on the scoreboard. 13-15 remaining in the game. Second down, call it nine. Jones launching one long downfield. Wilson, the intended receiver, and he did not catch it. Tony Jones back in the coverage. Lewis Oliver was also back. Memphis State comes with a sprint out action, tries to get the receiver to cut to the sideline and then go up the sideline to, trying to get Tony Jones to bite down on the sideline wrap, sneak the receiver Charles Wilson down the field behind him but Tony Jones stayed with Wilson excellent coverage. He's now 6 out of 13 for 86 yards, 46 of them on that one long toss to Charles Wilson which led to the last Memphis State touchdown. 
Joe's in trouble. Down he goes. Wandy Weston and Trace Armstrong had him sandwiched. Huey Richardson and Jeff Ruff also putting pressure on Tim Jones, the quarterback. Trace Armstrong, who has been a gift from out of nowhere, seemingly, for this Florida defense this year. Ten men at the line of scrimmage. Perhaps the rush is on. Jeff fight. And to do the punting. Here come the Gators, and fight just got it away and got a good one away. Whoa. Back. Bad judgment right there by Tony. Should have given the... Uh, Fair catch signal, luckily held on to the football. Tyrone Betters, number 96, really delivered a hit on Tony Lomack. And Lomack just doesn't have the experience as a punt returner right now. This is the first time he's really seen any action because Stacey Simmons had been doing that job. Well, the Gators have it with 12-21 remaining in the game. Trailing by three. First down at their own 31-yard line. Emmett Smith had to leave the game with some kind of a knee problem. We're waiting for a report from down below. The pass intended for Willie Sneed. The pass was incomplete. Let's go down to the sideline now. Larry, what have you got on Emmett Smith? Well, Emmett's got the rest of the day off. He has a sprained left knee, the extent of the sprain, and what this means next week and all that. It's far too early to tell. But Emmett has a sprained left knee. He will not play again in this ball game as the Gators try to play catch-up in the fourth quarter. So Emmett Smith's string of 100-yard performances comes to an end. But more importantly, you just hope it's nothing more serious. Good Morris protection. back to throw. Complete to the tight end. Mark McGriff for the first down out across the 45-yard line. Damon Young and Jeff Harris bringing down Mark McGriff. Well, we've often heard the expression, take what they give you. Memphis State is doing a nice job on the Gator-wide receivers and the tight ends are doing an excellent job for the University of Florida getting open in those gaps at the linebackers create when they drop back to cover the wide receivers. So perhaps throwing the ball to the back, throwing the ball to the tight ends might be the key to success. First down at the Gator 46. Wayne Williams gets about a yard, maybe two. There is Emmett Smith, that left knee wrap. I hate to even bring this up, but the report last week on Stacey Simmons said a sprained knee, and it turned out to be much more serious than that. Hopefully, hopefully that will not be the case with Emmett Smith. Well, he's concerned, as uh, all of us are, for his health, so we'll just keep our fingers crossed. And right now, the Gator offense uh, challenged by Memphis State. Second down at eight. 11-18, the time remaining. Gators trailing by three. Wayne Williams. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Eddie Moore in on the stop, along with Clarence Haver. Memphis State just having a lot of success shutting down the running game. Florida probably going to have to go to the air more often to move the ball. And this is in all probability of passing down. Third and seven. At the Florida 49. Morris dropping straight back. Can't find a receiver. He's going to run for the first down and come up short, losing the football. It's recovered by the Gators. I believe they're going to call him down. They are. And now it's going to be fourth down and four. Chris Bromley came up with a loose football. But I believe they had ruled Kyle Morris down before he lost it. In any event, it's a fourth and about three. The Gators will have to kick it away here. This is Herbert Perry. And a timeout's going to be called here by Memphis State. There was 9.59 remaining in the game. Memphis State discovered they may have had an extra man on the field, so they wisely called a timeout. That leaves them with only one. That could be a factor later in the day. 9.59 to go, fourth quarter. There's your score. We'll be right back. Join Sports Channel Florida for Miami Hurricane football on Sunday, October 23rd at 7 p.m. The Hurricanes take on the Cincinnati Bearcats right here on Sports Channel Florida. Standard equipment for the Florida 
sports fan. Pete Van Wehr and Jim Yarborough back with you from Florida Field. 9.59 to go in the game. Memphis State leading at 14-11. Herbert Perry on to do the kicking. Jeff Fight, who does the kicking for Memphis State, is back to return this one. Standing at his own 10-yard line. A correction, Acosta Rua checked in after the timeout was called. Perry was out there initially, then Acosta Rua came in. He gets it down to the 15-yard line. And that's where Memphis State will put it in play, a 33-yard kick for Fernando Acosta Rua. And Memphis State is in bad field position again. You know, backed up uh, where? On about their 15-yard line. If that Gator defense can hold, they'll give their offense another opportunity with decent field position. And there's plenty of time left in this ball game, 9.51. First down at the 15. Jones giving the ball to Gerald White. White runs it out across the 15 to about the 18-yard line. Rondy Weston making the stop. Memphis State using a lot of counter action up front, trying to catch the Gators uh, out of their lanes or perhaps uh, following the flow in the wrong direction. Second down and seven. Tim Jones, junior quarterback out of... Gordo, Alabama. Xavier Crawford, the freshman tailback. Let's see where they mark him out of bounds. If he got enough for the first down, I believe he did. Looks like they're going to mark it just across the 25-yard line. Tony Jones and Godfrey Miles forcing him out, but he got the first down. This play, the Tigers do a great job of turning the corner. They get the nice blocking up front and get outside. And there you see a distressing sight. And everybody in the stadium right now looking as Emmett Smith is helped off the field. That left knee in question. 9.15 to go. First down, Memphis State. Again, Xavier Crawford. Trace Armstrong right there. You know that Crawford's a strong runner if he can break the tackle of Trace Armstrong. And he did, in fact, pick up another couple of yards after Trace hit him near the line of scrimmage. Crawford now with 11 carries for 51 yards. Memphis State up one in first down. Up four in yards rushing. Down only eight in total yards in the game, and where it really counts on the scoreboard, up three. The inside handoff won't go for much. About a yard, no more. Jeff Roth and Rondy Weston. In there to make the hit. On Wayne Pryor, the fullback. That brings up a third and six. a big test for this defensive unit. They've got to hold them right here. Tim Jones rolls left. Firing downfield. Wilson's wide open at the first down at the 44-yard line. Tony Jones was back in the coverage, but Wilson was all alone out there. Charles Wilson coming into this game had 11... Uh, receptions just played a brilliant game this afternoon. Jones just drills the strike. Tony Jones, number eight, playing a very soft corner right there on Wilson. Tim Jones now seven out of 14 for 100 yards in the air. Eight minutes remaining. First down, Memphis State. Xavier Crawford looks for running room on the far side of the field. And he's got another Memphis State first down. He goes out of bounds at the Gators' 44-yard line. Pat Moore and Lewis Oliver. Uh, just a very impressive performance all afternoon by Memphis State, but especially right here on this series, starting on their own 15-yard line, not only getting out of the hole, but they're threatening to move the ball down the field and score. And they're doing it against the defense that was ranked number one in the nation coming into this game. Crawford now 12 carries for 63 yards. First down at the Gator 44. They pitch to Xavier Crawford again. A big hole. He's got another first down. Down to the 32-yard line. Pat Moore and Lewis Oliver. And Jim, whenever we have to keep saying Lewis Oliver on the tackle, that means that the first line of defense did not get the ball carrier. And one reason they didn't is because of the great blocking up front. Big Keith Bland, a 287-pound sophomore guard, just threw a crushing block 
at the line of scrimmage right there. First down at the Gator 32. Seven and a half minutes remaining. Memphis State up by three. Driving again. The snap is fumbled. The Gators have it. Pat Moore falling on the loose ball after Tim Jones mishandled the snap. Well, I don't know who said they'd rather be lucky than good, but right now the Gators are a lot luckier than they are good. Memphis State just moving the ball with all kinds of uh, regularity. We see the play before the fumble right there, moving the ball consistently. They just had a bad exchange between the quarterback and the center, an unbelievably bad break for Memphis State, a great break for the Gators. First down at the Florida 30. Kyle Morris giving the ball to Wayne Williams, and Williams running hard out to the 39-yard line, a nine-yard gain. Cornerback Steve Smith brought him down. It'll be second down and one. Well, if you're looking for a match to light the fire in the huddle, possibly that turnover will do it. Uh, even though it wasn't deserved, it was just a matter of luck. Uh, the Gators still, in fact, benefited from the turnover and have the football back with 6.55 to go. Seven carries for 29 yards now for Wayne Williams, and those shoulder pads must feel about a ton heavier to him right now with Emmett Smith out of the game. He carries again. Looks like he got the first down. Those guards, Tory Epps, making the tackle. It's going to be close. They may have to bring out the chains, but they may not either. It is a first down. And Just across for, the 41. Excuse me, Pete. Look for Kyle Morris to perhaps to go back to his tight end again. The tight end... Uh, Mark McGriff has been open on a number of occasions. They've had trouble getting the ball to the wide receiver, but they are going to have to pass the ball if they're going to move the football all the way down the field on this series. Lomack in motion. McGrady and Williams, the running back. There Morris he is. Taking the handoff, throwing back to Wayne Williams. Williams, that play only went for about two yards. Nico Perkins, number 41, was right there. Kevin Sills, who was out of action last week with a pinched nerve, the big offensive guard out there trying to throw the block for Williams to tail back, but uh, Memphis State defends the play very well. Eight out of 19 for 101 yards now for Kyle Morris. A second down and eight. The clock moving, showing 550. The Gators trailing by three. McGrady and Williams line up behind Kyle Morris. He's back to throw. He's got some time, but he throws oh, it incomplete, yes. and a pass interference flag goes down. Mark McGriff, the intended receiver, Nico Perkins was right with him and delivered a hit just a little too soon. Well, Kyle Morris was looking for Mark McGriff. We mentioned the tight end was having some success here this afternoon, but Nico Perkins just was wrapped like a blanket around the, t the big tight end right there, and he didn't have a chance. Uh, Mark McGriff breaks to the sideline. Nico Perry is riding him, and an obvious call. Now the Gators have another first down, and the clock has stopped at 5.33 to go in the fourth quarter. First down at their own 49. Morris back to throw again. Again, the protection is good, and wide open is Tony Lomack. Lomack gets inside the 35-yard line for another first down. Nico Perkins making the tackle. Boy, did Morris deliver that ball right on the money. Tony Lomack is cutting across the secondary right now in a drag route, and he does throw a bullet. When you have the protection up front, you can get those guys loose in the secondary on occasion, especially when they have the speed that Tony Lomack has. First down at the Memphis State 33. Wayne Williams gets three more yards down to about the 30. James Cribbs, Scott Rumbley making the tackle with some help from Nico Perkins. It's second down and seven. Williams down nine carries for 36 yards. Emmett Smith out for the day. His left knee initially diagnosed as a sprain. Hopefully nothing more serious than that. Second down and seven. 4.34 the time left. The Gators down by three. Morris back to throw. Complete it to Terrence Barber. Barber trying to elude the 
tackle of Steve Smith was at least able to fall forward for a yard or two, but Steve Smith would not let him go. Kyle Morris reading the blitz there before the ball was snapped. Memphis State tipped their hand. Safety blitz, linebackers coming. Barber almost escaped Smith for a touchdown right there. Kyle Morris knows he's going to have the heat on him. Gives the ball up in a hurry to Terrence Barber. First down, Gators at the Memphis State 22-yard line. 4.05 the time left. William inside the 20, still on his feet. And down he goes at about the 17-yard line. Randall Cooper making the tackle. Crowd of over 73,000 on hand. They haven't had a whole lot to scream about this afternoon. But they are exhorting this team to come up with one score here. With the clock beginning to work now against Memphis State, if the Gators can take it in. 3.33 remaining. Second down and four. Oh! A loose ball. Morris falling on it, but a costly down expired. Well, what goes around comes around. Memphis State had the same problem on their exchange a few minutes ago, and they gave the football up. Now Florida at least fell on their own pump. The Gators taking a timeout. 3.18 to go in the game. Memphis State leading it by three, and we'll be right back. Well, this time out, leaving the Gators with two in the game, brings up a third down and about six yards to go for the first down, and a very, very important call coming up here for the Gators. And really, they feel like they're going to have two shots at picking up the first down. Uh, if they don't make it on third down, they'll, in fact, obviously go for it on fourth down, so they have two plays in which to pick up six yards. They'd rather pick it up immediately. They'd rather score immediately. But they're thinking we got two shots to pick this first down up. McGrady, the lone running back, lining up behind Kyle Morris. Third down and six. Morris is back to throw under some pressure. The ball is tipped and picked off. Glenn Rogers all the way back to the... 33-yard line, a penalty marker is down there. He stepped out of bounds back at the 41. The third interception of the afternoon by Memphis State, and this might just have won Memphis State the ball game. Well, there's three minutes to go. The defense uh, can perhaps get the ball back, but an incredibly a big break for Memphis State right there. Plus, they're going to tack on another 15 yards. I think a gainer was pursuing the interceptor and hit him out of bounds, and they're going to add on 15 to it. Mm. Here's another look at the play while they walk off the penalty yardage. Glenn Rogers, number 28, is going to pick the tip ball off right here, and he's sprinting down the field. He's going to get hit after Morris knocks him out of bounds. Marlon Brown, Brown number, number 53, 53, tips the ball away. And let's see if we see the hit. Kyle Morris hustles over to make the play. First down for Memphis State. The pitch is to Gerald White. White inside the 25, down to the 22-yard line. 2.56 remaining. The clock moving. Pat Moore making the tackle. The Memphis State Tigers trying to pull off their biggest win since Charlie Bailey has been their head coach. I don't know. Now, last year they beat Alabama. And this would probably top it. This I would think probably it would because it. of Bailey's connection with Florida. I agree. Prior to going to Memphis State. Two and a half minutes to go. Second down and six. White again the ball carrier. Inside the 20. Down to about the 18-yard line. Where it'll be third down. You see Charlie Bailey on the sideline. And it's been on the ground primarily where Memphis State has done it. They now have 180 yards on the ground on the afternoon. Third down and two. The fullback fire does not have the first down. 
He's shy of that by a couple of yards. Trace Armstrong seeing of that. But Memphis State in pretty good shape for a field goal here. John Butler. They really didn't want a field goal, though. They wanted more than that. A field goal would give them 17. The Gators scored touchdowns. Florida still wins the game. Butler is connected from 22 yards and from 45 yards this afternoon. A minute 28 is left. This Don't will be a 35-yard attempt. Can't go to sleep here. They might fake this field goal. You never know. Uh, the three points will, in fact, give them 17, but... Uh, So the timeout taken with a minute 14 remaining. That's the last timeout left for Memphis State. They let that time tick down as close as they can get before calling the timeout. It's going to leave Florida with a minimum amount of time at best when they get the ball back. Well, it ain't over till it's over, that's for sure, but uh, they're going to get a shot at the field goal right here. The Florida will, in fact, get the ball back. 14-11, Memphis State leading it. You see Kyle Morris leaving the field now, his left hand. It's like he's got a dislocated finger there broken finger so this could be a somewhat costly game in more ways than one for the Gators Butler has not missed we'll see if this is a true attempt or a fake it'll come from 35 yards away like the Gators are going to rush 10 men so they believe it's for real the Gators coming but Butler gets it up and puts it through a 35-yard field goal by John Butler. There is a minute 10 remaining. Memphis State has a six-point lead. The Gators will have one more try. We'll be right back. Getting last-minute instructions from the sideline. Emmett Smith is out of the game with a knee problem. Stacy Simmons is out for the year with a knee problem. So injury is beginning to become quite a factor for the offensive unit of the Gators. Incredibly tough position for Herbert Perry to come out in. Uh, all they've done is ask him to go out and win the game. <laughs> One minute and 10 seconds left, left in the fourth quarter, and he's going to see his first action of the afternoon. Back deep for the Gators, Willie McClendon, number five, Wayne Williams, number 23, Curtis White, number 43. John Butler's field goal giving Memphis State a 17 to 11 lead. Again, he squibs the kick along the ground and picked up by Curtis White. White with a good return gets it out to the 38 yard line. And Herbert Perry, after a 22 yard return by Curtis White, will try to drive the Gators in the final minute and three seconds. The Gators have two timeouts remaining. Memphis State cannot stop the clock. They wouldn't want to. See the time remaining. The ball is on the Gator 38. Lomack in motion. Perry back to throw. Penalty markers down. I think somebody jumped too soon for the Gators. So this will cost Florida five yards. Five penalties against the Gators on the afternoon. 50 yards total. First and 15 at the 33. They're going to have to eat up some big yards in a hurry. Move that football down the field in a minute and three seconds. Herbert Perry sends Lomack in motion again. Back to throw. Has good protection. The ball incomplete. In and out of the hands of Tony Lomax. Got Rumley back on the coverage for Memphis State. Well, the only good thing about that play is it did stop the clock. So it'll be second down. 58 seconds remaining. 
Cedars just having all kinds of trouble getting the ball to the wide receivers down the field, except for the one big catch by Ernie Mills earlier in the ball game. That Memphis State defense, uh, the secondary, just shut the Gator wide receivers down. 67 yards away are the Gators with 58 seconds remaining. Trailing by six. Perry back to throw. The pass is picked off by Eddie Moore, his second interception of the day, his sixth interception of the year, and Memphis State is doing it. Look at Charlie Bailey on the Tiger sideline. How many times, Jim, do you see a team come off a big win like the Gators had last week against LSU, come up against a team that they're heavily favored to beat and have trouble with them? Well, especially in the Southeastern Conference right here, we see the interception that puts the uh, final nail in the coffin for the Gators on this Saturday afternoon. Memphis State coming up with a big win here at Florida Field, a place where the Gators rarely lose. Undefeated, 5-0 coming into this ball game. Jones gonna run around as long as he can back there, and then head for the sideline. 39 seconds remaining. Okay. Charlie Bailey cannot believe his quarterback ran out of bounds. He wants him to lay down. He did try eat to up. eat up some time by running around in that backfield for a while, but as soon as he was about to get hit, he headed right for the sidelines, and it does stop the clock with 39 seconds left. Timeout has been taken here by the Gators. Well, if you want to look at a silver lining of a dark cloud, it was not a Southeastern Conference game. A loss is a loss is a loss. Very difficult situation for the Florida Gators here today. Memphis State taking control of the ball game literally from the outset. Big, big victory for Memphis State. Uh, for their program, for their head coach, Charlie Bailey. But it was not a Southeastern Conference loss for the Gators. Their hopes of winning the Southeastern Conference have not been dashed. They've been hurt, depending on the uh, situation with Emmett Smith. We'll learn a lot more about the Gator chances in the Southeastern Conference later on this season. 39 seconds to go. Memphis State leading it, 17-11. Penalty marker is down near the line of scrimmage. The first meeting ever between Memphis State and Florida. And neither team will ever forget it. Charlie Bailey, uh, the head coach of Memphis State, was a player at the University of Tampa. Coached at the University of Tampa, coached uh, a year or two with the Miami Hurricanes, coached uh, with Steve Spurrier uh, down with the uh, Tampa Bay Bandits in the USFL. Was the defensive coordinator here at the University of Florida in 1985, and now he's the head coach at Memphis State. Dan Coglin, another guy who is here at the University of Florida, the defensive line coach now for Memphis State. Daryl Dickey is the quarterback coach. His father, Jim Dickey, coaches the defensive backs for the Gators. So a lot of ties between the two coaching staff. Last time out for the Gators, 35 seconds to go. Gators could have one last shot at it, but it's going to take one of those miracle plays if they do get it back. It'll be third down when play resumes. One time. 35 seconds. They've got two plays. They can just literally fall on the ball. And the game will be over. So Memphis State coming into Florida Field, a heavy underdog. The Gators, since 1981 in this stadium, against non-conference opponents, had won 24, lost only two, and tied one. Tim Jones just falling on the football. The Gators cannot stop the clock now. They're out of timeout. 
and that time just ticks away. The Gators look on helplessly. The Tigers look on jubilantly. Memphis State has done what no one thought they could do. And Charlie Bailey will get a ride back to the locker room as this ball game is over and in one of the biggest upsets of this 1988 college football season the Tigers of Memphis State have come to Florida Field and handed the Gators their first loss of the season the final score Memphis State 17 Florida 11 we'll be right back Sports Channel Florida is your ticket to the most University of Florida events. During the year, you'll see all the action of Gator football, basketball, and baseball. Plus, Sports Channel will bring you the best of Gator swimming, tennis, and gymnastics. Coverage you can't see anywhere else. You won't want to miss any of the exciting Gator action on Sports Channel Florida. Standard equipment for the Florida sports fans. Well, there it is, a very unexpected final score. Memphis State coming to Florida Field, knocking off the Gators, 17 to 11. Just not a very pleasant afternoon from any angle. You look at it, Jim, uh, Emmett Smith going out with a knee injury. Kyle Morris had to leave the game late in the fourth quarter. Looks like he probably will be able to come back, but you don't know about Emmett Smith, and there's going to be a lot of uh, questions to answer after this one. Well, I saw a bumper sticker coming up here today. It said it's hard to be humble when you're a Florida Gator, but it's not hard to be humble right now because Memphis State really socked it to the University of Florida this afternoon. And as you mentioned, what's the status of the health of Emmett Smith? But again, uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, it was not a Southeastern Conference football loss. It was a loss. It's very discouraging, very disappointing. But there's a lot of confidence been lost in that Gator locker room, especially on offense. They really haven't been able to put together anything uh, with consistency the last couple of weeks. So there's a lot of doubt about that Gator offense right now. And it's back to conference play next week as our next University of Florida football game coming up next Saturday, October 15th, 11.30 p.m. The Gators on the road at Nashville to take on the Commodores from Vanderbilt. Florida football has been brought to you by Dairy Farmers Incorporated.